Now, if you guys follow my artwork, you know that I like to do a lot of perspective painting. Depth of perspective is something I find really interesting and engaging. And I think it mirrors a certain philosophical depth to it as well. We automatically connect with this really strong sense of depth in imagery. So it's something that I like to focus on. This next one is a great example of a one point perspective. One point perspective is the beginner of doing perspective painting. It is the first step. And so if you guys want to get started with doing some depth of perspective painting, this is the video you want to watch. I don't start all my paintings with a mechanical pencil but when I'm working with more technical, rigid shapes and perspective, I can find it really useful to be thinking with a pencil. So all these lines are converging to one point near the middle of the canvas. And that is called the vanishing point. Only am I trying to reach in the direction of going almost directly at you. When you have directly at you, you only see a little bit of it. That's because the object is in skew. Oftentimes when artists first get to explore still life painting, they find themselves creating uh, glasses and cup shapes and trying to explore what a cylinder is at, at skew when it changes that shape can be a really challenging thing to do with your eyes at first. But once you have it done with your eyes, then you can apply that into abstract painting. And that's what really creates that believable sense of space, is taking an object that is potentially flat and skewing it in this direction so that you can only see the top lid of it. That's what I'm doing here. After I get done with a really solid drawing like this, I have multiple different choices and directions to go in when it comes to painting. If I want a painting that is overall brighter and more saturated with its color, I'm most likely gonna start off with a glaze or a wash of that bright color over a huge portion of this canvas. Once I have that dialed in, then I can start glazing back my darks on top of it and it'll give it that impression that's still keeping those lights in there and it's still maintaining uh, the light of the canvas underneath it. Our eyes have the ability to see through the color, see the white of the canvas and have that white reflected back to us through the color. So it gives it a very luminescent kind of paint. Now, I used a lot of water on this wash. Glazing medium probably would have been a little bit more ideal, but it doesn't matter. I'm transitioning this light fluorescent green into a light blue and thinly applying it over the canvas, spreading out as far as it can go so that it gets on semi-transparent. I hope this short video was helpful and informational for those who are interested in learning how to build depth into their canvases. If you're interested in the whole thing, this one has some amazing nuggets of knowledge and it is in the links in the comments, so feel free to check it out. Also, like and subscribe so more people can see this art content. <laughs>